UAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adai Tano Program. Harley Davidson of Guam, visit our new showroom now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Timuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on your primetime news, a federal investigation is underway after a construction site accident leaves one man dead. Plus, is the Tomorrow Land Trust Act a violation of fair housing rights? Nestor Lacanto has more from District Court. And who leads the 35th legislature? Chris Barnett has more on what is being discussed. Good evening and half a day, everybody. I'm Jason Salas, and a federal investigation is now underway after a man was killed in an apparent construction site accident. Nick Elgato has the tales and our top story. A possible freak accident in Manila, the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration now investigating after a construction worker is killed. Guam Fire confirming the victim was struck by a backhoe bucket while spotting for the operator who was digging a hole. It happened around 4.30 p.m. on Sunday on Palomares Street just off the back road to Anderson Air Force Base. My, my daughter uh, came and said, oh, daddy, there's an accident happening here and then I have no idea. Romeo Murgia has been living in this neighborhood for more than two decades. No, this is a very quiet place, very, very quiet, and then I don't see any tragic accident like that. This is the first time I hear that there's a construction accident in here. It's really sad, of course. It's really uh, sad to hear something like that because uh, I think safety is not really <laughs> addressed. Safety concerns now being looked into. It's safety Romeo is all too familiar with. As he says, he's worked in the construction field for 10 years. They should always observe the safety because that's uh, the first thing you need to uh, learn when you go to the, uh, before you go to the construction site. All the basic safety uh, things that you need to, safety shoes, harness, and then hard hat, that's the most important thing. Yeah. And then when you're digging, uh, of course you need to have a rigger to watch what's going on. To OSHA is now trying to find out what went wrong. According to their Honolulu office, one of its compliance officers just happens to be on Guam. The OSHA employee declined to comment. A spokesman in the San Francisco regional office confirms they are investigating but would not provide further details. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guaho Sinek Delgado. And Nick also adds that the medical examiner's office did perform the autopsy day on the victim who has since been identified as Jay Wasasang. The medical examiner's office is not allowed to release details. Well, a dead woman has been taken into custody after a six-year-old child that she knew was found wandering the streets along Swamp Road in Dedido alone Wednesday morning. Genevieve Defning has been charged with family violence and child abuse. Court documents say a witness spotted the child and called police. Investigators learned the suspect and her boyfriend began getting mad at the victim for not waking them up. The suspect is accused of trying to hit the child with a small barbecue grill before the victim ran out of the home. The suspect's then accused of chasing after the victim before attempting to throw a kitchen knife at the child. She then allegedly hit the victim in the head with a bottle of baby powder. Documents state the suspect took off and left the child alone before apparently telling the victim, quote, I don't want you here, so go somewhere else. Police later interviewed the suspect and made their arrest. While complaints of unfair competition have been lodged by shipping company Maxin Navigation in business headlines, as a shipper is suing the U.S. Transportation Department's Maritime Administration in a bid to halt what it argues are unlawful subsidies to rival shipper American President Lines. The complaint filed in federal district court states that while certain U.S. vessels receive financial assistance from operating in foreign commerce, APL Saipan operations are not eligible. Matson, which does not receive subsidies, says it's not competing on a level playing field and has lost 23% of its volume to APL since 2016. Matson is seeking to stop any further subsidies or, in the alternative, a prorated reduction in payments. The global shipping news source Tradewinds reports that APL is not worried about Matson's attempt to block subsidies. Well, downtown to the legislature, things did get a little heated when Senator Tom Adam moved to get an emergency bill on the agenda over the objections of Senator Fernando Estevez. Adam says a newly issued AG's opinion finds that a recent property tax increase only applies to million-dollar properties and not those that are more than that amount. He says the Education Facilities Fund, where the tax proceeds would go, would lose millions unless the law is fixed. But Estevez objected because the measure has not gone through the standard public hearing process. Place this bill. Shall the decision of the chair be uh, overruled? I there was a motion. Madam Speaker, there was a motion placed on the floor yes. and an objection. It should go to a vote. 
This That's is the ruling of the preside, presiding officer. It never, is it that never the went motion, to the presiding officer. There was a Senator motion Stevens. and there was an objection on Senator the floor. Senator Point, go point of order. order, Madam Speaker, let's let's bring some uh, let's bring some decorum to this body, if you will. I believe the way the standing rules reads is that I can a, a member of the body can make a motion to waive, in this case, such as I did, to waive the public hearing and to place the bill on the agenda. It is based on the justifications that I gave that there is an emergency. It takes eight votes to overrule the speaker's decision. That's the way it goes. Read the standing rules. So if she determines that it's an, an emergency, then get your eight votes to overrule it. Point of per personal privilege, call to the House. Atta says the Educational Facilities Fund faces an $8 million shortfall based on the AG's opinion, but his motion to place corrective legislation on the agenda failed. Well, who will lead the 35th Guam legislature? Discussion is already stirring up weeks out from newly elected officials being sworn into office, as Chris Barnett reports. Legislative Democrats continue to hold caucus meetings to determine leadership for the 35th Guam legislature. But one senator has confirmed with KUAM there may be some major shakeups at the Guam Congress Hall come January. A source at the legislature tells KUAM News current Democratic caucus talks are centering on Senator-elect Tina Munya Barnes as Speaker, Senator Talina Nelson as Vice Speaker, Senator-elect Amanda Shelton as Legislative Secretary, and Senator Regine Bisco lee as Committee on Rules Chair. That has been the discussion, Democrat Senator Joseph Augustine told KUAM News. They're leaning towards Tina, but ain't nothing guaranteed until the end of the day, St. Augustine said. <laughs> Senator Bisco Lee declined to comment on the caucus meetings, but St. Augustine confirmed that Munia Barnes, Nelson, and Shelton are in the mix for top leadership positions. Top senatorial vote-getter and acting speaker Therese Terlahi has said she would like to remain as the speaker. San Augustine telling KUAM News, there was a rumor I wanted to be speaker, and of course acting speaker Terlahi has said she wanted it too. There's still a serious debate on all the leadership positions as we're moving along, saying you're going to get a position. Well, that could change by the time we're done. The 35th legislature, meanwhile, will be sworn in on January 7, 2019. With San Augustine telling KUAM News, while there hasn't been any fighting in the caucus, talks have been intense. He said, there's been intelligent discussion and debate, but there's no fight among the 10 Democrats. There's serious discussion, but no fighting. In addition to the caucus talks that Augustine confirms, there's also wheeling and dealing going on outside of caucus meetings, with Senator St. Augustine telling KUAM News there is sideline discussion going on. For Guam's News Network, Chris Barnett reports. Also tonight, during the last month of his term, Governor Eddie Calvo sent a letter to the superintendent of DOE requesting the agency vacate one of the buildings at their Tizen headquarters. But John Fernandez responded saying, not so fast. Here's Carmen Talahi. Governor Calvo is asking the superintendent of GDOE to turn over the keys to Building E in Tizen. In a letter dated November 20th, Calvo says, quote, Given that Guam DOE is in possession and use of a three-story, 83,000-square-foot new office facility and is still using the original Cortec office building, I have determined that Guam DOE no longer requires the use of Building E, end quote, requesting the sub-license building be returned to Gov Guam. Superintendent John Fernandez responds. It isn't unoccupied um, or available um, for use at this particular point. Uh, and I would say that mostly because I'm concerned that um, with, with, the, with regard to the audiological testing site, uh, we utilized uh, federal funding to, uh, to have that um, testing room uh, in place there. Investing $35,000 in federal funds, Fernandez says he'd feel, quote, uncomfortable, explaining to USDOE the move. Building E currently houses the SPED Transportation Office, rooms for hearing and vision tests, maintenance, and is a secure place for parking buses overnight. Though Governor Calvo didn't specify what the rooms will be used for, he did say, quote, the time has come to utilize Building E for other purposes. According to Fernandez, he thinks the intent was to give more rooms and parking to Guahan Academy Charter School. Obviously, every, you know, you know Guahan's out there and they're, they have their needs and their issues, and I'm sure that's being heard. 
uh, but we also have our, our needs and issues. Chief Administrative Officer at CACS, Judy Wompat, confirms with KUAM that she did follow protocol and wrote a letter to officials making this request, welcoming the opportunity to expand classrooms for GACs. The superintendent saying he's working to formalize his response to officials soon. It seemed like such a rapid and quick decision um, and a request for action. And uh, I frankly think there should be a little bit more thought and planning and allow us to seek other options. Chief of Staff Mark Calvo and Special Assistant Vince Leon Guerrero are tasked to make the transition happen before December 2018. In a second letter to the superintendent, Leon Guerrero requests a site visit to Chief Brody, Tizen, and PDDOE facilities as soon as possible. Reporting for Guamzi's Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Trilaki. It's time for a break, everybody, but please stay tuned. Primetime continues on KUM TV and Facebook Live right after this. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. value relationships because when we commit I love you God until you're 80 until you're 90 until you're 100 forever we are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter because when we commit to relationships we never stop caring Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. These are our islands, and this is our Laddie Stone. This is what we stand for and who we are. For more than 35 years, we delivered connections that matter throughout the Marianas. First, via radio link, then by fiber optic cable. We launched the region's first 4G LTE network and continue to make our network faster and stronger. Telecommunications change the way our islands interact with the world, but not the heart behind those interactions. IT&E. Explore your world. Everyone saves money on Black Friday, but at Cars Plus and Mighty, you can save all month long during our Black Friday sales event. Right now, save up to $10,500 on a new Ram 1500 or save up to six grand on a new Chrysler 300. How about a new Chrysler Pacifica? Save up to $4,000. Buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card where you'll get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Get great deals all month during Cars Plus Black Friday sales event. Cars Plus, driven by you. Chuck E. Cheese's Guam is not all fun and games. Our pizza is delicious with the freshest toppings, oven baked to order. Try the fresh salad bar, sandwiches, and don't forget our mouth-watering wings. Come and eat at Chuck E. Cheese's Guam. The Mets and USO Rock and Run for Our Heroes is coming back to the Guam Museum, Skinner Plaza, on Saturday, December 8th. $15 for individuals, $10 for students, and $40 for groups of four. DJs will be rocking music throughout the course. Lace up your shoes, bring your families and friends, and rock and run for our heroes. Sign up at Hornet or Guam.USO.org today. Special thanks to all the sponsors of the Matson USO Rock and Run for Our Heroes 5K. Welcome back to Primetime, everybody. Arguments on whether the Chamorro Land Trust Act is discriminatory and therefore a violation of the Fair Housing Act continued in federal court. Nestor Lacanto breaks it down. The federal government filed suit last year challenging the Chamorro Land Trust Act as racially discriminatory because only Chamorros, they argue, can benefit from the lease of Chamorro Land Trust lands. The U.S. Attorney General is seeking to overturn the law or open the leasing to non-Chamorros as well. Attorney Michael Phillips, who helped craft the CLTC law, is assisting Guam's AG in the case. He says it's a complicated history, but it's not about race. It's about a class of people Congress itself established. It's in one swoop of a pen. Everybody on Guam at that time, no matter what your, your race was, became a, a U.S. citizen. And the term used, Chamorro, the judge made a big uh, issue about that. The term is used, Chamorro, but the definition is really a political definition. That is, that's really our argument. Further, Assistant A.G. Ken Orkut argues Congress not only created the class, 
The Land Trust Act also provides them with an opportunity for legal redress. This is a classification based upon Organic Act citizenship and the people that are entitled to receive benefits under the Chamorro Land Trust Act are people who are basically descendants of people who had their land taken by the federal government in the years immediately after World War II, basically between 1944 and 1950. Judge Mulway took the matter under advisement, but also urged the sides to consider a settlement. But that's not currently under consideration, and Orcott says that will be up to the next administration to decide. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Also tonight, it is a sight that brings joy to thousands in our island community every holiday season. Our Joe Nungancharfis gives you a sneak peek of what you can expect at this year's beloved Christmas village down at the Agana Shopping Center. It's become a tradition for many, viewing the Friary Christmas display. It was back in 1992 when the first Christmas Village display came to life by members of the Kanata family. The display eventually outgrew their home, outgrew the Capuchin Friary, and is now found a home in the Agana Shopping Center. You can expect everything from Christmas ornaments and decorations, houses, lights, bells, whistles, Santa Claus, and more to get you into the holiday spirit. According to engineer Vince Ariola, there's about 13 different elements or stations people can look forward to viewing. Spearheading the design of the display is Adrian Diaz. She said when putting the overall design together, she took a step back and thought about the reaction of children, but would get their minds running wild and leave them in awe. When creating this display of memories and traditions, she made sure to incorporate colors and different textures. It truly is a walking tour of Christmas and something that is not to miss. The Friary Christmas display opens Saturday, December 1st till January 2nd of next year from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on the second floor of the Agana Shopping Center. Although there's no entrance fee, donations are always welcomed. For more information, you can call the Capuchin office at 472-6339. Day field trips are also welcomed. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonathan Charpris. Now, speaking of the Yuletide season, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We are actually doing a lot of different varieties because we also have our favorite pentatonics music. But one of the coolest things this semester is that when we went off tour in Thailand, we actually ended up getting a piece of music from our friends from Poland, and we're going to be performing it for this concert, and it's one of our most favorite pieces. It's all ages event. Uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, family and friends to come together. And of course, UOG's award-winning Laddie Tones group and their concert, A Joyful Tune, begins Friday the 30th and Saturday the 1st at UOG's Fine Arts Theater. Doors open at 7, the show starts a half hour later. Tickets are sold at the door, three bucks for students and seniors, five dollars for general admission. Not to be missed, as is sports, which is coming up. Gatorade Game Changers, right after the break. Join the thousands who switch to GTA's handset payment option. Now I can get the freshest new phone at any time. My payments are based on my finances. No more contracts for me. It's time to get the phone I want when I want it. With HBO, I get to choose. <laughs> Call or visit GTA today to learn more about HBO, the most customizable phone plan on island, only at GTA. How easy is it to earn reward points using the Alpha Plus app? Here, let me show you. Simply register with the all new Alpha Plus app and earn reward points while making purchases at your favorite stores you already shop at. 
just present the app to any authorized representative to earn your point. Now that was easy. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. <laughs> wow! Wait, what? Everyone's excited about the Chevy vehicles at the Chevy Black Friday sales event. I could get used to this. Wow. And you will be too when you get 0% financing on our award-winning Chevy cars, trucks, and SUVs. How is that even possible? <laughs> Now get 0% financing for 72 months on popular 2018 and 2019 Chevy models. Or make no monthly payments until next year. The Black Friday sales event ends soon. Call, click, or visit AK Chevrolet for a test drive today. Shell's Million Miles giveaway is back. And we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus Miles to 10 lucky winners. So how do you make your getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See stores for details. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We start the show off tonight with our Gatorade Game Changer segment with Chris Barnett and then take a look at some news on our men's national basketball team. Check it out. Eddie Cho is an Islander. Cho joined John F. Kennedy's soccer club as a sophomore, and he's been the team captain for the 8-0 Islanders. Cho wasn't a newbie when he walked onto JFK's team. He was already on the CNMI's U15 national team. He capped off his JFK rookie season by hitting the game-winning goal in the AAAG championship game for the Islanders. Playing soccer at JFK, the most memorable moment I will always cherish. It will be my championship winning goal during sophomore year. That was one of the greatest moments that's ever happened to me in this sport. Um, I will never forget that for a very long time, and I really hope that it can happen again. While Cho was a staple on the CNMI's U15 national team, he moved to Guam to play for this island, and he's now on the Guam U19 national squad. Choosing the Guam side over the, the Saipan national team was based off me living here. It was just a better, it was just a better uh, decision in my opinion because living here would gain me more practice time instead of uh, living here and playing for another national team off island. It wouldn't give me the practice with a team. Cho has scored 11 goals in the double I double AG this season, and he also suits up for Wings FC and the ASC Islanders for outside league action. While scoring on the pitch may seem easy for Cho, his real goal? Netting good grades and keeping his options open as a ROTC student. Grades come first before uh, sports, in my opinion. Um, I feel that grades will get me a better future. It would uh, gain me more opportunities than life could ever hand me to. And joining the ROTC program just gave me another open door for another path in my future. Um, I feel like joining that and sticking with it for three years, I feel like it's gonna be my main path. Cho started taking AP classes as a junior, donates to the Red Cross, helps veterans, and lends a hand at car washes and beach cleanups. I feel that giving back to the community should be ha should happen more often with other people. Cho also uses soccer as an outlet and he's been hitting the pitch since he was a young lad. Soccer is like really enjoying to play. I mean, I just grew up loving the sport. Um, I started at a very young age, which grew me into becoming the player I became. And it's just like, I get to release anything that's going on with my life, like on the field, whenever it's like good or bad, you know, it just shows off what I'm capable of and like what I can do. Cho thrives under pressure and he does what he does on the field while rocking a 4.0 grade point average. The Islanders are at the top of the double I double AG boys soccer heap and Cho has his sights set on taking JFK all the way to the championship. And anybody who knows Eddie Cho knows he has no problem getting his goals. And that's what makes Eddie Cho a Gatorade game changer.
Team Guam picked up the win last night over host country Thailand, 91 to 70, to improve to 3 and 0 in the FIBA Asia Cup Eastern pre qualifiers. The team plays Indonesia at 6 p.m. tonight, Malaysia on Friday at 8:30, and Macau on Saturday at 3:30 in the afternoon. All games are streamed live on YouTube at FIBA Asia Cup. In programming news, Monday, December 3rd, on the stations of KUAM, 4 in the morning, NFL on CBS, KUAM TV 11. The Buffalo Bills head to Miami to take on the Dolphins. Then at 11.15 in the morning, switch the channel over to KUAM TV 8 for NBC Sunday Night Football. Phillip Rivers and the LA Chargers taking on Big Ben and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Up a day, I'm Rod Boss. As the new president and CEO of Docomo Pacific, I want to personally thank you for voting as PICA's best mobile, internet, and cable service provider for three years in a row. For friends and families serving in the armed forces, you voted us best of the Pacific again this year. Thanks. Ask your friends and family to come over and give our mobile network a try, and we'll give them three months free. We have select devices up to 50% off. Sign up today. You plus Docomo Pacific. Better together. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Check the Connect, Guam's new online source to find local pros and services when you need it the most. Search for services by using keywords or browse through categories and start checking things off your to-do list. Explore listings and find verified professionals on the island for your everyday needs from home to auto, special occasions, and so much more. Create a customer account to rate and save your favorite listings. Get connected today. Visit theconnectguam.com now. It's back and bigger than ever. The big deal is going now at Triple J. Our best pricing on all new and used cars with no payments for 90 days, 1.9% financing on approved credit, and a $500 gift certificate from Kmart or the Micronesian Mall. Get thousands off for the holidays on all new Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazda, Lincolns, Volvos, Kias, and used cars. Now is the time to come see the largest selection of brands on Guam during Triple J's biggest promotion of the year. Stop by Triple J or get pre-approved instantly online at TripleJGuam.com. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. See dealer for details. Triple J. Customers first. All right, everybody, here are tonight's birthday shout-outs, courtesy of our friends at Cold Stone Creamery, led off on this November 29th by Lucia McDonald. Happy birthday to our mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and great-great-grandmother. Happy birthday from your family. Happy birthday to KUM kid Michael Paul Villagomez. Happy birthday number 10 to our wonderful son from mommy and daddy and your entire family. He does that Fortnite dance pretty well, too. And happy belated birthday to Austin Raymond Tidigui Cruz. We love you always. Say mom, dad, and your brothers. And if you think I am going to even attempt the Fortnite dance myself, we tried that once when Sabrina was here. It had disastrous results. So I'll just say, if you would like to be a member of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club, just go to KUM.com, fill out the form. You do not have to see me dance, but maybe I will. You never know. Tune in and stay tuned because In the Mix is next. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Thank you.